I already know better 24K got nothing on me Make you want it forever Try to play a game but you don't play for keep G'day, my name's Warren Marshall and this class is all about shooting silhouettes. Now as photographers, we can create a silhouette quite easily with a minimum of equipment. All we need is a camera or a phone or some sort of device to create an image. We can create a silhouette without a camera if we want to. There are various different ways that we can create silhouettes. A silhouette is a dark subject against a light background and we can shoot portraits, we can shoot landscapes, we can shoot objects in this way and we can create some really stunning images depending on how we do it. So in this class, you're going to see a number of different silhouettes that I've taken. You'll also see a live shoot of a silhouette session that I did both outdoors and inside so that you can see the various different ways that we can shoot silhouettes depending on the situation that we're in. You may have at one time taken some photographs of a sunset because the colors are beautiful and sunset is a great time of day to be out shooting. But your foreground or anything in the foreground of your image may have come out completely dark because you may have been shooting on automatic settings, automatic exposure, and your camera has taken the major part of the image, which is that bright background, into consideration when um, setting that exposure. So you end up with a, a properly exposed background, but your foreground is very dark because it's unlit. It's not lit by the sun. You're shooting the shadow side of those subjects. Now this gives you a bit of a clue about how we will approach shooting a silhouette photograph. When we shoot a silhouette photograph, we tend to expose for our background. So we want a light colored background and we want a dark subject. So if we're shooting outdoors, we might shoot against the setting sun or we might shoot against the bright sky and have our subject in the shade in the shade of a tree or in the shade of a building or something like that so that the, the light on our subject is minimized and the light in our background is maximized. So we would expose our camera for that particular situation. When we're shooting indoors, we can do the same sort of thing by brightening our background and darkening our subject. So we can shoot against a wall where we um, have sunlight hitting that wall and position our subject in the shade whether it be a vase of flowers, a particular object, or a person. If they're in the shade and the background's in the sunshine, you will tend to get a silhouette photograph. We can also light that background. If we don't have any sunlight on our background, we can put some light on there, either with um, constant light, LED light, or we can use flash if we need to. And that's the situation you'll see in the shoot that we have at the end of this class, where we shoot indoors. We use flash on the background or um, LEDs on the background to brighten it and have our subject in the darkness. Now camera settings that you use will depend on the situation that you're in. If you're outdoors shooting against the sky, then the aim is to get that sky exposed correctly or a bit brighter than normal and have your subject a little bit darker than normal or a lot darker than normal. So we want to expose for that background. So what I would generally do is to set my ISO depending on the time of day, maybe around 400. 400 is a good all round ISO to use. Then I would make sure that my shutter speed is set to a speed that's not going to give me any camera shake. I don't particularly want any movement in my silhouette because the sharpness of a silhouette is one of the great features of it. So we don't want any camera shake. So I'd set my shutter speed around about 1 100th to 1 200th of a second. Then I would vary my aperture or my f-stop to give me the correct exposure on my background. So if it's quite bright, I might stop it down to f22 or f16. If it's quite dark, I might shoot at f4 or f5.6. Now those settings are very generalized. You have to adapt those settings depending on your environment. When I'm shooting in the studio, it's a little bit easier for me because I can control the light on my background and the light on my subject independently. I would still try to keep as much light off my subject as possible. So I would shoot with all of the lights out in the room and I would light my background either with flash or with constant light to make sure it's brighter, much brighter than my subject. So give that a try, see how you go. If you're not sure, maybe switch your camera across to auto exposure and take a note of what settings your camera has set 
then switch back to manual, set those settings and then adjust it up or down to get the results that you're looking for. You may not always get a perfect silhouette, which is full black against full white, but that's okay. You can either accept that your background's going to have a nice detail in it, which often adds to the image. I don't always want a completely white background, particularly when I'm shooting outdoors. I might want to show those stormy clouds or that really nice sunset color in the background, but still have my subject completely black. The other thing you can do is in post-production. In Photoshop or any program that you use for your editing, you can increase that contrast to make your blacks blacker and your whites whiter. You told me I'm your anchor. I told you you're my pole. Through the wind and fire, we try to hold on. G'day. We've come to a local park down here at Belmont South to shoot some silhouettes. We're going to use this park because it's a great location. It faces west across the, the lake because we've got a setting sun out there. That sky is really bright out towards the west. If we face our model towards the east, she's going to be in fairly shaded situation. So she's going to be dark against that bright background. The ideal situation to shoot silhouettes. We've also got some great trees at this park. We've got a jetty that we might be able to use later on. But just have a look and see the sort of shots we get and the sort of exposure that we do. I'm going to expose for my background and get it correctly exposed or a bit bright uh, and not worry too much about my model. I want her to go into darkness. We build this ship together, searching for a home. Despite the storm that hit us, we are still on board. Dancing in the moonlight, the world just stop and stares. We got no destination, I'll take you anywhere. All the doors we've opened, and all the books we've closed. Words just come together, story that we never told. So far that's a great shape just like that going to focus zoom in there we go let's get down a little bit lower yep just so that I can get her against that sky and make that silhouette a little bit more obvious now I'm going to zoom in a little bit more grab that focus on shake and you turn your face around to the right a little bit more show yeah that's it fantastic Okay, that's good. Can you move that hand out a little bit further and, and lean forward a bit for me? Yeah, that's it. Turn that face around. I don't want to contort you too much so that it's difficult. That's okay, that's good. Okay, one more, yeah. Okay, that's great. Now, can you stand up there for me? That's it. Maybe facing towards me. Yep, and just turn your waist and your face so that you're facing down that way. Yeah, that's it. Now, maybe hands... Maybe just cross your hands across, yep, yeah, that's it. Turn that face, yeah. Good, okay. I can even see the outline of your eyelashes. Perfect. That's weird. That looks good. You've got amazing eyelashes, Shay. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to move down here a bit further and just change our location. Okay, so I'd like you to get out on the end there if you can. Um, it should be dry enough. If you can stand on that little tuft of grass right at the end. We've got Shay out on this little isthmus here, this little peninsula. Isthmus is a very difficult word to say, but this little peninsula that goes out into the lake. Because she's going to be isolated there with water all around her and sky in the background. She's too far away for me to instruct her with poses, so I've just asked her to go through a series of poses and hold them for a little while as I shoot. So you'll see the sort of things we can get here. I always be your
getting down low here so that I can isolate Shay against that background. It's not easy for me to get down on the ground to shoot so I've developed this amazing technique of being able to guess. And it generally only takes me five or six goes to get it right. So um, it works quite well. That looks good. We're going to try a few more of these isolated trees as we move up this way. Told me I'm your anchor. I told you you're my ball. Through the wind and fire we try to hold on. All the doors we've opened and all the books we've closed. Words that come together, a story that we never told. So far I shake in for my own. You said just keep holding on. If you're about to break, oh, oh, oh I always be your captain. From Can you put your hands up above your head? We have grown. Yep. You said just keep holding on. If you're about to Maybe break, that the front one, move it out a little bit more. Stay there, and I'll shoot you with that sun behind you. See how that looks here? Yeah, that's okay. When you're looking over that way for me, yep. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put the sun in behind Shay so that it backlights her hair but still gives that nice silhouette effect. If I shoot straight into the sun, I'm going to get too much flare in my lens. So I'm going to drop my camera down so it's in the shadow of Shay and get that nice backlight effect. Okay, so I, I focus on Shay. Focus. That's it. And then I just drop my camera down in that shadow and take that shot. That looks good. I just need to separate her a little bit. There we go. Good. A little bit further. As long as I stay the same distance from Shay, my focus should be fine. That's it. Now I'm getting a little bit of flare in there, but I like that. That looks really cool. Uh, I've got detail in the background, and that's sun in behind Shay. It's not right directly behind her now, but it works quite well. So we might get you to move across a few meters, please, Shay, just so we can get that sun. In. Yep, that's it. Just before I had that you are interspersed with those branches and things. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Focus. Okay, that's good. Here we go. That's it. Yeah, that's better. One more. This technique does make it a bit hard to get your composition the way you want it. But I'm going to widen that up now, get some trees in it. Yeah, lovely. Okay, that looks great. Shot of the day so far, that one. Terrific. The thing I like about this park is it's got great shaped trees, but they're all separated. It's one tree every 50 meters or so, so you can get the full shape of that tree and, and they look amazing. Oh, I keep sinking into your blue, into your blue. Yeah, I keep sinking into your blue. Alright, so we're here at our um, last location. We're going to shoot towards this setting sun. It's beautiful here on the lake, really nice and smooth, so we get a great reflection in that water. With Shay out on the jetty in silhouette, because we're not lighting her, we're just exposing for that background. So we can do a number of different compositions, as you can see here, the various different shots that we've done.
on the end there where you were before, looking down, just look at that sun. Once you turn to the side to look down into the water, just down like that, like you were with that hair back, yeah? That's it. Okay, maybe turn towards me. With that, that knee across in front. Yep, just turn your face up that way. That's it. Great. So we've had a great afternoon here today. We were expecting a bit of rain, but it turned out really well. And you can see with locations like this, how could you take a bad photo? We're heading back to the studio now, and we're gonna do a few silhouette shots in the studio. A couple of suggestions for those who may be a little bit more advanced with their photography. The first one is to try to um, eliminate any flare that you might get from that background. Because we're shooting against a bright background, we often get lens flare in our photographs. So try to eliminate that if you can by um, tweaking your exposure so that you've just got enough light in your background and um, enough light on your subject or, or as little light on your subject so that you don't create too much of that lens flare. You can also do a little bit in post-production to fix that. The other suggestion would be to maybe light a tiny part of your subject. So you can have a complete silhouette of your subject or you can have just a tiny little bit of light using a snoot or some sort of very small light source to maybe light the eyes of your subject or just a part of them so that that stands out in that silhouette. That can be a little bit more creative with your silhouette making. You could introduce something into the background such as smoke or a little bit of water or something like that and backlight it with your silhouette against those things. That can make a big difference as well. Or you can replace your sky. If you have a completely white sky in your image or you're not completely happy with that sky in the background, you can use sky replacement in any of the editing programs to put a more dramatic sky in that background. So there are a lot of options available for advanced photographers to tweak these silhouette shots to make them look that little bit more special. When we're shooting silhouettes, our composition is a very important part of the image because, as I said before, we have a very minimum of information about our subject in this shot. So we need to convey the information that we want to about our subject in the shape and the composition and the viewpoint that we give our viewers to view this image. So if we're shooting animals or we're shooting people, it's best to try and get a profile shot of your subject because if you're shooting straight onto your subject and they're looking at you, you're going to get just a generic shape of a head and a figure in that image. So turn your subject to a profile so that you can get that individual profile of your subject in the image. Now, this is a generalization again. Most of the things we, we teach in these classes are generalizations. You can tweak them or change it to suit your own purposes. But generally speaking, if I'm shooting a human or if I'm shooting a bird, for instance, I want that bird to turn their face to profile so that I can see the, the, the character, the shape, um, the kind of bird that it is. If you're shooting a, an object, some sort of generic um, vase of flowers or, or an object particularly, just move it around until you can get the composition or the character of that particular subject working well within your image. You can turn your vase of flowers around a little bit just so that the blooms separate from the stems. Um, there's a whole range of different options that you can use, but look at it from the camera's viewpoint and just alter your composition or your orientation of your subject to suit that particular purpose. If you're shooting a full figure shot of a subject, of a person, as I mostly do, then the pose of the person makes a big difference to the shot too. Try to have their limbs separated from their, from their body so that it shows the shape of their body or their figure um, without having their arms in the way because having arms in front can make people look a little bit fuller and a little bit bigger and change the overall look of their, their pose. Um, when you're shooting people who are walking or moving, try to time your shots so that those limbs are separate and those limbs are in a position that's gonna convey the best 
shape of your image to your viewer to make your image look that much better. Of course, when we're shooting moving um, people in an image, we might need to increase our shutter speed a little bit just so that we get that sharp image and we don't get too much motion blur in our picture, which often means making your aperture a bit bigger to let more light in to compensate or increasing your ISO that little bit to compensate for that faster shutter speed. Also, the placement of your subject within the frame can make a big difference to how your shot looks. Silhouettes really lend themselves to negative space style images. So having your subject in the bottom corner with space around the top corner or having your subject to one side of your image, it really lends that sort of negative space um, kind of compositional tool um, to this style of photography. So give that a go. If you're shooting a complex subject, try to make sure that your elements are separated within that frame. If you're shooting uh, a tree with a, a person standing underneath, try to have some separation there or have the delineation of those shapes within the image recognizable to your viewer. So they, they don't have any um, questions about what it is or, or how it's put together or what that person is actually doing within the frame. You might find that having your subject elevated from your camera position might work a little bit better because you can isolate them more against the sky or you can get down low and shoot upwards at them. Um, positioning them against a background that's mostly bright uh, will work fine, but if you do have a horizon or you have some foliage in the bottom of your frame, then your silhouette's not going to work from that down. So getting down low or putting them up high will help that situation to separate them and to make them look more um, important and more precise within that image. All right, we're in the studio now. So we're going to do some silhouette shots with Shay using the situations we've got in the studio. We're going to do some shots with flash a little bit later on, but I wanted to show you just some simple things we can do with doorways or windows. We've got a doorway here that we're going to stand Shay in. We're not going to light her. We're going to turn the lights out in the room so that she's dark and that will give us a silhouette of her against the background. So that's what we're going to do now and watch how we do it. All right, Shay, we're going to get you to turn around to the side, turn your whole body around to the side. Yep, because we need to get Shay in profile if we can. So we're going to turn your shoulders back towards me. Yep, and your face in straight profile. Yeah, that's good. Maybe this right hand closest to me, just in behind your bottom. Yep. Just do it like this, just so that, yeah, that's it. Okay, that's great. All right, so I've adjusted my camera settings to expose for the background. And Shay is pretty dark in that shot. Now she's not completely dark because we've got these room lights on. I'm going to turn these room lights off and she will be much darker and she'll be a full silhouette. Okay. Focus. That's great, Shay. Yeah, good. Just pick your left hand up and just run it through your hair, maybe. Yeah, that's it. That's good. Just like that. Yeah. All right. Terrific. Okay. So you can see the results of that. Um, we get really nice silhouette shots just against a, um, a doorway. Now the light outside is fairly dark, so you could do it in the middle of the day and get a probably a much brighter background. So these sort of shots can be done up until probably about sunset if you wanted to. We're going to move across now and do the same sort of thing with a window. All right, we've just moved across to another corner of the studio where we've got some light coming through the window. Again, it's fairly dark in the day, so there's not a lot of light coming through there. So I just need to adjust my exposure so that I'm getting very bright background and not much light on Shea. So when I go to shoot this shot, we're going to turn our room lights out so that there's very little light on her at all. Okay, Shay, I need you maybe bending forward closer to your, to your knees. Yeah, that's it. And I want you to lift your chin just to look up at the wall for me there. Yeah, that's it. Okay, great. All right, can we have lights out please? That's it. Terrific. Now, can you pick one knee up further than the other? Yeah, that's it. That's good. Now just drop your chin down a little bit, yeah? Okay. All right, that's great. Lights back on. All right, so you can see the results that we get there. Just a plain window 
No fantastic equipment, simply your SLR, you could do this on your phone and get similar results. Next, we're shooting against a seamless white background. You could use a paper background or you can just use a white wall. We've got a couple of flashes to light our background, but we've got no light on Shea. Again, we need to turn the lights out in the room because we've got a white painted room and any light that's around is going to light Shea and interrupt our silhouette sort of appearance. So we're going to turn the lights out, do a couple of shots of Shea, and you'll see the results that we get. Okay, Shea, what I want you to do is turn to the side. One foot forward, one foot back. Yep, wait on that front foot. Yeah, that's it, that's good. And looking straight ahead. Yeah, great. Okay, lights out, please. All right, here we go. That's great, just put your left hand up on your hat for me. Yeah, great. That's it, and the other one behind you, your back. Yeah, good. Okay. That's good. Now, can we turn to face me, feet apart? Yep, maybe this hand on your hip, yep, and just turn your face right around to the side. Yeah, that's it. Can you turn your face further? Yep, good stuff. Okay, I'm just going to zoom in, get a closer crop of shea. That's it. Great. All right, can you take your hat off for me? All right, that's good. Just hold your hat in front of you and turn that face again that way. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yep. Now just put your hands up as if you're putting your hat on. Keep your face to the side. Yeah, that looks good. Great, Shay. One more. Just push that hip out a little bit to the side. Yep. Great. Okay. That's good. All right, can we have lights, please? Okay, you can see how simple that is. Just have your model without light, have your background lit, and you get those great silhouette shots. We're going to move across and just do some against the brick wall. Now, just a white brick wall. What we're doing now is we're just shooting Shea against this white brick wall but I've changed my lighting to a simple speed light. So we've just got a speed light in behind Shay. Uh, I'm shooting so that you can't see the speed light, obviously, it's hidden behind her, but it's going to be lighting that background. No light on Shay, so that we're gonna get a silhouette. We'll probably get a little bit of graduation on that background too, because the speed light's not going to fill that whole area, but that can look really cool, so that you've got that little uh, vignetting towards the edges. So we'll do some of these and you'll see what we get. Okay, just take a tiny little step that way. Yeah, that's it. Okay, when you're ready, Brooklyn, you still need that, yep, that profile. Right around as far as you can, yeah? That's it, good. I know it feels really awkward. Okay, that's good. Okay. Can you put your hands up, maybe in front of the fire? Yeah, maybe ditch the hat. Ditch the hat. Just put it on the ground, yeah? That's it, good. Two hands just up, yeah, like that. That's it, maybe a little bit further back on your head. Yeah, that's it. Turn that face here. Good. Okay, here we go. Now, feet apart a little bit more. Yep. That's it. One hip out. Good. Yep. Great. Your left arm, just move it out a bit further so it doesn't get in front of your face. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Great. That's good. One more. Okay. Terrific. That's good, Shay, thank you. Okay, lights back on, please. Okay, um, so we're going to finish off with another technique with Silhouette. We're going to use a large soft box. I know not all of you will have a large soft box, but we're going to use that large soft box and use that as the light from the background and just put Shay in front of it. The last thing we're going to do here is to put Shay in front of this large soft box. The soft box is providing the bright background. It's turned down fairly low, down to about an eighth power and we, we're going to turn the lights out so there's no light on Shea. Now because the softbox is fairly limited in size, we need to crop in fairly closely, uh, but you'll see the results that we get from this. A perfect silhouette, just the same as all the other techniques. Okay, that's great where you are, Shea. Lights out please, Piven. Yep, just hang on to that hat, yep. Okay, focus, here we go. That's great. And put the hat on for me. Keep your hands up on it. Yeah, that's it. Good. Yeah, that's good. Just do a vertical shot. That's it. Here we go. 
go. Yeah, same thing. Good, yeah. Just pick the hat up off your head, hold it there, yeah. That's it. All right, now just hold it down in front of you. Yep, we might turn you the opposite way. So you're facing over that way with your face. Yeah. Um, with that hat, yeah, just turn your face that way. Yeah, that's good. Okay, here we go. Great. All right. Yeah. No, that's okay. All right, that's good. Okay, so you've seen how we can get great silhouettes, whether we're outdoors or indoors. You've seen various different scenarios that we can use with lighting. You don't need much equipment. All you need is your camera or your phone, and you can get amazing silhouette photographs. I'll see you in the next class.